What's up guys? Welcome to another expansion pack here on Nerds Gone Rogue. Remember you can find expansion pack every mon every Monday, right? Monday at noon Eastern time. <laughs> wow. I for I look, we got a new background for the show and like it looks a lot like the Nintendo Power Block one uh just because it's the Nintendo spin-off show and it's like man, it messed me up real quick. But it's okay. You can find it Mondays at noon Eastern time here on youtube.com slash NGR radio and NGR radio.com. Uh, joining me as always, Eddie V, Edward Varnell, that retro. Hello, code. everybody. Ed, I found a super interesting article on Nintendo Everything. And, you know, a lot of these fan sites, you kind of take everything with a grain of salt or whatever. Uh, yes. But, you know, I haven't prefaced you because I want to, I want to, I want to honest reaction from you. And so I'm just going to read this article. This is mon this is about Monolith Soth's next project, right? So we've heard rumblings that they they want not that it's happening, but they want to port Xenoblade X and the original game to Switch at some point. Like they've they've made that clear that they want to do that. But this is about their new project. So <sighs> Monolith Soft interested in, in Xenoblade and Xenoblade sequel, Xenoblade X sequel, and an original project. The physical version of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 soundtrack debuted in Japan this week, as of as of this recording, which was May twenty fourth, twenty eighteen. Uh, included included inside is a booklet which features a discussion with Monolith Soft boss Tetsuya Takahashi and Ko Ko Kojima, who has been a director on all the Xenoblade games. It's not entirely clear which of the two said it, but it sounds like Takahashi spoke ab about his interest in future projects. He mentioned wanting to create another Xenoblade sequel, a sequel to X, and also makes a brand new original project from scratch. Uh, where? This is this is not the article. This isn't the article I wanted. But anyways, he said something about bringing a project to Nintendo that would push the boundaries about what was allowed to be on Nintendo. He wanted to stretch the boundaries and make it action oriented, erotic and push the boundaries of what is allowed on the hardware. Now, uh -huh. what does that mean to you? In this original project. I'm going to try to find the article for this original project, but what does this mean to you? I think they want to try to tell a more mature adult, not not adult, but more of a mature story. Um, and not make the game, not make the game focus on sex but explore maybe something that deals with intimacy and closeness and uh, make the theme more because that's one thing about Nintendo uh, that they focus in on fun and you know they don't really focus too seriously on narrative and story um, but when they work with other partners and stuff and they want to bring that material in, they actually can. Uh, if you look at, um, you know, Nintendo being shot, you know, people were shocked with Nintendo partnering up with Platinum and Sega to bring Bayonetta 2. Uh, and seeing how that all turned out, you know, Nintendo only funded that game. Yeah. You know, it wasn't from their developers. Uh, with Monolith Soft, uh, because you know Nintendo, they're they're one of Nintendo's developers. They don't know if they can actually push a game that's T rated. Um, yeah, I mean I that's, I that's T, that was in rated. Um, I found the article, by the way. It was it. Was, I was looking on the wrong website. Uh, Xenoblade developer Monolith Soft wants to make a quote violent, erotic, and heavy M rated game for Nintendo. The Xenoblade Chronicles two not with. Well, let me start over. With Xenoblade Chronicles 2 out of the way, Monolith Soft has been thinking about their next major project. What exactly this might be remains to be seen, but studio head Tetsuya Takahashi wants to make a, quote, violent, erotic, and heavy M-rated game. One that pushes the boundaries of 
what is normally permitted by Nintendo. It isn't explicitly clear whether or not he's referring to another Xenoblade title with a different direction or a completely brand new property that may or not be another RPG. Uh, but he really wants to push the boundaries of what Nintendo offers to their players. Uh, so, of course, they're focusing more on the female body and see what they can explore with that. Um, even though all that stuff sounds great, it, it sounds attractive to people when they hear something bloody and violent stuff, it's still going to come down to how well the game plays. You can have all the you can have all of that in it, and if the gameplay looks janky, they're not going to even look forward to what what they are going uh, for the blood and violence and the eroticism and stuff. You know, Nintendo is just like, well, if this is your idea, you guys want to bring it to us, and be, let it be allowed on the system. You guys will have to actually make sure that, it, it, like, because I, I don't think it will cause any controversy. Um, I think it would be more people will be surprised that Nintendo is will be allowing this to be on the system. Um, and what 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 could be sister, what can't be sister? Because you got to think about it. Um, is it going to be acceptable in Japan and not America? Or Europe, or is it acceptable in America, but not really in Japan? You know, uh, are because we could we could look at Nintendo's history when it comes to eroticism and things of that nature. Look what they allow Rare to do with back uh, Congress Bad Friday. Mm -hmm. You know, that came on in sixty four, and it was treated. It was supposed to be treated as you know pushing the boundaries of taking something that's cute as a mascot and giving them this world uh and nintendo allowing that to happen uh look at nintendo uh with eternal darkness um with uh what's his name studio at that time um how they allowed that to be on the gamecube you know and even though that cup, that developer wasn't a part of Nintendo, uh, they still got an M-rated game from them to be on the system. You know, and I don't know if uh, the Metal Gear Solid one was an uh, M-rated game. It might have been. Uh, so it's not it's not anything within Nintendo like developed from Nintendo published by Nintendo you know this would be de developed from like their second party and not them now if Nintendo is willing to allow it with this new president under it we probably we probably could see what they could offer can Monolaw Soft though offer an action game that's in par with Ninja Theory and Platinum or you know is it up easy even if it's up to the level of Darksiders can it be on that kind of level because yeah. what what genre is this is this violent and erotic game going to be is it going to be a visual novel that a lot of Americans don't know yeah I mean for me I like for me I'm just imagining like Xenoblade chronicles mixed with bayonetta at some point like mm -hmm. like a darker version of xenoblade where you know you still you still get their traditional kind of rpg kind of feel from i would say like xenoblade 2 and x like something like that but darker in tone maybe more adult themed maybe the characters aren't kids maybe they're more like a, aimed towards adults and kind of have that japanese kind of cultural a sexified look to them, you know, but still be on the same level of like quality of Xenoblade or, or something to that nature. You know, I, I look, right. the Japanese culture is way different than ours, right? Like that kind of stuff is like over the last few years, that stuff has kind of been frowned upon over here as opposed to Japan who thrives on that kind of thing. So. Cause they, they know what, they know because of people watching a lot of anime and all of those tropes, 
they are they are used to it. Where here, you know, a lot of people still don't know the anime tropes mm-hmm. of of Japan. That's why you'll see that in Japan, uh, a girl who's looking sexy and stuff might be the age of fourteen or fifteen. Well, that's very questionable here. So they raise the age up to like eighteen or nineteen, mm-hmm. even though it looks like a kid. Yeah. Um, l- look what they did with uh. Uh, Fire Emblem. Uh, is it was it Awakening? Uh, I would say more heroes. <laughs> uh, or are you... no, no. When they took out the, uh, it might have been well, Awakening or Face. It's one of them that I they th- took out. I think it's Face. They took out the Red District section. They removed that uh, from the game. It might have been Awakening. Okay. I, I, yeah, it might be a way because they left they left a lot of st- more things in in Fates for Amer- the American release than I I think it was Awakening. Awakening, okay. In Japan, they have a red district section and as an option to play in the game. Um, they had to remove that whole thing for America because it has a di- it, it it's just a different meaning. Um, we know that. In Japan, that they use that for historical moments, mm-hmm. you know, and we've seen it in movies, we've seen it in their anime, and we kind of understand what that red district section uh, or red district light means in feudal Japan. Here, because anyone could, anyone who was into the Fire Emblem series, they they that would be very problematic here. Because it's seen as like it's it's seen as prostitution, and that wouldn't be a good look for Nintendo. You know, they gotta they gotta apply to America's laws and rules and stuff about that. Now, it it would be cool that if they could offer that as a extra piece, or people want to download it, but but be like you have to pay for this if you want. Mm -hmm. So I I think. I think it could come out. I think it could work. I, I was just like, we would have to see what Monolith Soft would be thinking. And it's going to be up to a very mature and adult gamers mm-hmm. who own the Nintendo system if they're going to be interested in play. And, and really pay attention to the rating system of it. Because this is, even though it might look Japanese and art and have a look to it, we still don't want to give this, give this to a, a game to a kid or a team who really not supposed to be playing this game because they might not understand the things of Japanese culture. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you? What do you guys think about Japanese culture making it way, making its way into uh, the the West? What do you think about Nintendo maybe taking a chance on? grabbing a game that aims more towards that side of culture like what do you guys think about this uh by the way the sources i've gotten this this story from uh, i want to start incorporating sources into the topics we talk about uh i've i've tried to do it on the podcast but on expansion pack when we talk about a story it's been kind of haven't been doing a good job so uh my nintendo news nintendo everything uh and then uh there's a few reddit posts as well uh, about people talking about this game. So, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, where where do you want to see Monolith's next game go? Uh, do you want to see this as a more mature Xenoblade style story? So, let us know. Leave a comment. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. This has been Expansion Pack. Remember, you can find it every Monday at noon Eastern Time right here on youtube.com slash NGR Radio and NGR uh, Thanks, Ed, for joining me. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time. We love you. Bye, everybody.